Hello everybody, uh, back again with another review. Uh, this review is on sleeping bags, uh, bivy bags uh, and a couple of tops I currently use. Uh, there's quite a selection of sleeping bags and bivy bags. Um, if you watched all of my videos uh, from present to now as I'm going through my kit uh, at a home state, you will become to realize um, depending on what kit I'm carrying uh, is to what time of the year I'll be out. Now as it stands at the minute um, we're still straw winterish time so the kit's going to be heavier. Um, so I'll go through the sleeping bags uh, bit by bit. Um, I'll just tell you a little bit about them, not much and not too much into depth. Um, but yeah, like I say, if you watch my videos, uh, you'll know uh, when I go out, I won't need to explain too much about it and you'll have a rough idea of what time of year it is I'm out. Um, so without further ado, um, we'll get down onto the floor um, and I will start going through uh, a selection of sleeping bags, bivy bags and a couple of tarps. Um, incidentally, one of the setups that I use um, quite a bit, uh, at the end of this video I will show some pictures of it um, just so you can get an idea of how easy things can be used uh, and they don't have to be extremely heavy and so on. So without further ado, we'll uh, get down to the floor and we will start um, the talk on sleeping bags and whatnot. So I'll pan the camera down and let's have a look at them. Right, so as said, um, a, a selection uh, of sleeping bags, bivy bags uh, and a couple of tarps and whatnot. Right, so what we'll do is I'll just run through of what they are. I'll move them to one side uh, and then I'll go through them all. So, British Army Cold Weather Sleeping Bag, um, Snug Pack Sleeper Extreme, uh, Mountain Hardware Gear, Cheap B&M Sleeping Bag, um, Snug Pack Jungle Bag, British Army Jungle Bag, uh, then we've got the Snug Pack Stratosphere, Rabstorm Bivy Bag, a cheap bivy bag, uh, then we've got the British Army bivy bag, um, then we've got a multicam tarp, uh, 3 metres by 3 metres, uh, then with the Rab Silt tarp 1, um, not too sure on the sizes on that. So they're the things that I'm going to just slowly or quickly go over. Um, so what I'll do is I'll move this lot to one side and I think we'll start with a British Army cold weather bag. So that's going to be the first one, so the rest of them will just move out of the way quickly. I'll try and do all the sleeping bags and then I'll start on bivy bags, um, just so we don't get lost in what we're doing. So, yes, British Army sleeping bag, uh, cold weather. Um, as you can see, it is a fair road hefty bag. It will compress down a little bit more. Um, it is fur weighty, um, but this is what I use for winter, winter, winter sleeping. These will be the extremely cold nights. Um, but yes, it's a big hefty bag, but it, it's worth it for what it is. Um, now, so much to touch on with this. It could be a thing. Um, for all sleeping bag manufacturers, I'm sick of it. having sleeping bags that have a zip on one side or the other. Um, come on, let's do the uh, sleeping bag world justice and give everybody the option. The centre zip is absolutely brilliant. If you're in a bivy bag or a hammock uh, or a small uh, tent or anything like that, the centre zip is absolutely fantastic 
Uh, it's the quickest and easiest way to deploy in and out of a sleeping bag. Um, so that's just a quick note to all sleeping bag manufacturers. Uh, come on, it's about time. We're in modern times now. Give us the option. Um, so anyway, enough baffling on about that. Yes, come with it. This is the large one. Um, they do come in three sizes. Um, I think it's um, large, medium and small. Uh, this is a large one currently because of my height. Centre zip, couple of pockets in it uh, and I, inside this, run a sleeping bag liner. Uh, it just stops me from washing it because I don't want it to lose its properties. Um, a, a good sleeping bag for the really, really, really cold nights. Drawstring hood on it. Um, this is what I'll use in super, super winter times. Um, baffle down the middle of the zip. Um, the Velcro is currently covered. It has a thing that covers it and then uncovers. And then you Velcro it all up. And believe me, snug as a bug in a rug. Um, that's what comes to mind with that. So yeah, that's that one. So we'll zip that one up. Put that one out of the way. Uh, then I'll go on the snug pack uh, sleeper extreme. Uh, by the way, none of these companies have sent me these items to trial or anything like that. Um, these are all bought and paid for out of my own money, so I can give the honest review. Uh, but if anyone was to send me anything uh, to review it, then I'd, unfortunately anything that I review that I don't pay for, I review to the test of destruction, um, just to give an honest opinion about it. Um, but like I said, my own stuff, I take care of it, um, and who wouldn't, because you've uh, all worked hard for it, and it's hard paid, hard earned money, should I say. You have to get out of your pit in the morning to go and earn it. Um, they want your money, so why not every once in a while? Can't these big companies just say, uh, yeah, I've sent you that, test it to destruction. So, right, yes. Snowpack. Um, this is the Snowpack Sleeper Extreme Base Camp um, sleeping bag. Uh, it has a zip down one side. Like I said, you can either have a left or a right hand zip on this. And um, if you're listening, Snowpack, it would be nice if. A lot of your sleeping bag range would have the option of a zip down the middle because this sleeping bag is, as says, it's snug. Um, it's a good sleeping bag. I've only used it a handful of times, uh, but yeah, no, it, I like this one because I don't know what it is with snug packs gear or whether it all has it on. It has like um, a brush off water repellency, so. When you're sleeping in bivy bags uh, and whatnot in this and you get that uh, moisture build up and whatnot, you're all right with this. You don't get any cold spots or so on. Uh, it doesn't absorb it. You know, you, you can brush it off uh, and you are a lot, 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 lot warmer. Um, it, it's a very, very, very comfy sleeping bag. Um, this is one of my pervert preferred sleeping bag so far um, yeah uh, I think that's all I've got to say about that but I mean I'm getting to the stage as where it's I'm becoming to use this more and more and more and more and more uh, during the winter months so but this will do you know slight summer months depending on what bivy bag you use with it so yeah that's the snug pack sleeper extreme fits me in it and as you all know I'm quite a tall individual so that's that one uh, I think we'll touch on the mountain hardware gear sleeping bag um, I'm sorry I've not talked about ratings on these I'm just doing a quick thing on the sleeping bags and whatnot uh, this sleeping bag I've had some years uh, and I tend to use with the walking. Um, this sleeping bag 
combined with a baby, biv, bivy bag. I'm sorry, I can't speak today. Um, absolute no, no. What do not use? Get this sleeping bag, and think you'll be fine in it in a bivy bag because you won't. Um, reason being is obviously your feet, or it tends to be with me, and your chest area um, are the ones that give off most of the heat as well as your head. But I'm telling you now, every time I've been out with this and used any bivy bag and woke up with cold feet and a cold chest, um, and that's with me keeping my face out of the bivy bag and out of the sleeping bag. Um, you know, anyone will know if you use any of the, you know, the bivy bags or whatnot or a sleeping bag, in a cold weather month, as soon as you put your breath in there, the moisture builds up and you're on a recipe for hypothermia or, or disaster. So yeah, no, it doesn't work. This sleeping bag does not work in bivy bags. Um, it is a very warm sleeping bag. I have used it in my tents and it is brilliant in a tent, but for a bivy bag, for the lightweight sleeping uh, system, um, no. Definitely, definitely not recommended. But would recommend it in a sleeping bag. Uh, excuse me, in a tent. Definitely, definitely in a tent. I've had some comfy nights sleeping that in a tent. Um, but with a bivy bag, no, don't do it. Please don't do it. Don't, don't, don't. And don't waste your money. Uh, it cost me quite a lot of money that one. So that's that one. Um, this is a cheap B&M bargain sleeping bag. Uh, I use this in cahoots because as you can see it's not long enough to fit me in it um, it exposes the, a good majority of my chest but I tend to use this in the summer months just when you get that little bit of a nip or a chill um, in cahoots with the jungle sleeping bag um, it's just that added extra little layer and if you put inside the sleeping bag um, you've got same again with a jungle bag you've got that water repellency coating on it and um, so this stays dry um, it's also good because like you say you give it a few washes when it loses its property it didn't cost much at all you can either use it for the dog then or throw it away or whatever and um, so yeah won't dismiss the cheap sleeping bags I think that was something like between six and eight pound uh, from a, a B&M Bargains. Good in combined with something else. So that's that. And we move on to the Snug Pack Jungle Bag. Uh, compressed down very, very, very small. A very lightweight sleeping bag. And as the same with all Snug Pack products, um, it seems they do their homework in them. Everything I've had from Snug Pack, yes, be a little bit costly, has been extremely good. And you know, if it was rubbish, I'd tell you it was rubbish, but you no, know, extremely good. Now, this sleeping bag is the same type of material on as the other one that I've just shown you. Uh, turn it over. Um, the others that I've shown you were a mummy style sleeping bag. This is um, a square shape because you can use it as a, a quilt or a blanket as well. It's got that water repellency material on it uh, and at the head end it has this very fine bug mesh um, is across the front of your chest and um, you can undo it all uh, and zip it up which goes right over the head, there's a zip that runs round. Now, if you're using this in conjunction with a bivy bag um, in the summer months, then it's very good to keep them creepy crawlies off you of a night or early hours of the morning. Um, it, it's a marvellous sleeping bag, very lightweight. Um, like I say, it, in the summer months, you can get that little bit of a chill, so that is where this comes in. You know, it's of a similar size. It slots straight in. Um, 
the zips on the same side. I don't suppose it matters which side the zips on, but like you say, in cahoots with the two, it'll keep you very, very, very warm uh, in the summer months. And they all pack up small, and they're all extremely lightweight. So yeah, that's them. The summer months. Now we'll move on to the British Army version of that uh, jungle bag. Now this is a little heavier and a little more robust. Not as many features on it as the snug pack uh, jungle bag. And a lot of people say, well, why not carry this? Well, I'm sorry, I have a bug proof option. That's one of the reasons why I won't carry it. The other one is the water repellency. And that's another reason why I won't carry it. I do use it, but not as often. Uh, good bag. Uh, it, it is what it is. If you're on a budget, then yeah, I'd say go for it. But like you say, in conjunction with bivy bags, and this is only warm weather use only, um, uh, you could go the option of the cheap sleeping bag inside it as well for something a bit more cooler. But yeah, it's it's pretty much you know square bottoms, same as the jungle bag. Um, drawstring hood on it, all the rest of it zips, so on. Uh, not a bad sleeping bag, but remember it's only a warm weather sleeping bag, um, and you know for the price of it. Yeah, it's all right. If you're on a budget, it's not bad. I do you use it occasionally, uh, but that's that. Right, sleeping bags out of the way. Um, I think we'll move on to bivy bags. Um, that's a hooped bivy, by the way. And these are normal. Right, if you're on a budget and things are tight, um, this is what I recommend every time, all the time. It's the British Army bivy bag. Now, they are slowly creeping up in price, but I got this a good while ago. Um, I've had it some years. I think I got it for about £40. I think they're a bit more than that now. But this is the thing that I go for all the time if I was on a budget. If I didn't have the money to try these others out, for this it is bomb proof it is excellent it's probably one of the best ones on the market i mean you know 40 pounds to 90 pounds for a rab storm bivy please remember that some of these all you're paying for is that name on it right i don't think they quite do as much research into it uh, and to me if the british army use it um then it's got to be rated quite well and very robust uh, so yeah, I'll move the other, these aside. Um, I'm not going to roll this right out because it's a very hefty thing. Um, the, the opening to this is massive. This will cater for all sizes. Big, small, large, wide, round, tiny, whatever. This will cater for everybody. Uh, and if you're clever enough, uh, and you get some tarp clips and whatnot, you know, you can open the thing up a bit, you know, for the hot summer months and so on and so on. Um, <coughs> absolutely bomb proof. Um, I love it. You, you know, they, they come in several colours. Um, I think they do the multicam and the green, um, obviously the normal camouflage pattern. Um, I can't fault it at all really because I mean it fits every sleep pad I've got so on and so on um, I, I take care of all my kit whether it be cheap expensive or what if you're on a budget or you want a good bivy bag go for this you'll not be wrong, uh, wronged by it you'll not be disappointed um, it, it's a little hard to get your head round to use it it's full Gore-Tex breathable all the rest of it Bomb proof, absolutely bomb proof. Uh, and we'll say it all the time, 
you're not going to go wrong with that. You will never, ever, 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 ever fail with that. Uh, and when rolled up properly, you know, this thing does back up quite small. And if you get a compression sack for it, you know, it'll go even smaller. I mean, there's a bit of air trapped in there, but, you know, it, it will go really small. Um, so, yeah, that excellent, 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 excellent. Bit weighty, but excellent, yeah. Definitely recommend that one. So, that's that one. Um, I think we'll move on to this. There's a bit of a, a cheapy. Um, this is only good for summer months. You know when you get them light showers and whatnot, it will keep you dry, um, but it's not as breathable as some of the others that I've got, um, and will condensate uh, quite a bit. Um, it has a zip. This one, currently the British Army one doesn't have a zip. It has a large opening at the top, uh, but this one has a zip that runs all the way down one side, covered with Velcro. It will breathe a little bit, um, but if you don't know your bivy bags or your sleeping bags. Not recommended for you because you will wake up damp in the morning um, due to heat that is generated from your sleeping bag and yourself in the morning. So yeah, cheaper ones, if you're going to buy them, do a bit of research into them, but yeah, mm, alright to an extent. Um, then I'm going to move on to the Snug Pack Stratosphere. Now I'm not going to tear this out, but what I'm going to do at the end of this video is I'm going to show some pictures of this uh, set up in cahoots with the Rab Silk Tart 1. I mean, if, if you think that's the size of my hand, you know, um, these items, you know, they don't weigh a lot at all. Uh, combine them together uh, and they'll give you a really, really, really good uh, shelter system. Um, the Snug Pack uh, it's, it's a hooped bivy, so you put some hoops over, uh, sorry, some poles over, and what it actually does is it takes it off your face. Um, you can zip yourself up in it because behind your head there is a, a vented bug mesh system, so you can sleep in it fully. But please note, we all bivy bags, you know, depending on what time of year, you will gather condensation in it and moisture. But I haven't had many bad experiences with this um, because you can open the part across your face and you can zip a bug mesh across it as you'll see uh, in the pictures later. Um, it is expensive, it is pricey, uh, I think I paid about £120 for it but I mean come on look at the size of it, it you know combined with that Excellent, absolute excellent. I, I love that thing, uh, and I'm not saying it just because it's Snug Pack. I've had nothing bad from Snug Pack up to now. Uh, by the way, Snug Pack, if you are listening and you want me to do a review on something, uh, please do get in touch and send it through because, uh, like I say, if I've not paid for it, I'm sorry, but it gets tested to destruction. Um, because then it'll give or oh, if it doesn't destroy then you know so be it but I want to give an honest review for people out there that are spending the money because like you know some companies I don't think they do the massive um, scientific thing behind it and all the rest of it I think they go off the back of what people have used in the past um, and charge a fortune for it because you're paying for a name um, Snug Pack is getting into the British forces, um, so it, it's got to be a good, reputable brand um, if the British forces are picking up on it and actually paying for it out of their hard earned money. Um, you know, in place of the issued kit. So, yeah, Snug Pack, definitely, that's one to have. Uh, now, I'll move on to the last one. Sorry, it's getting a bit cramp in the old knees. The Rab Storm Bivy bag. Uh, paid a lot for this. Paid quite a lot for this. Um, yes, you do condensate in them, but I mean, I'd rather have the cheap one that I've got. That's how bad it is. 
Um, it's a hard-ish durable material on the bottom. Uh, they've extended the opening a bit more to what it used to be. It used to be like up here. Um, I think Rab need to go down the line of, you know, doing a bit of research in the stuff because uh, we've been so large. Um, it'd be nice if you had a pegging point on this, but you have no options for pegging points at all. There is absolutely nothing on it. Um, the inside of it feels like a, what can I say, a cheap PVC leather jacket. Um, and the inside of this just feels like normal waterproof cheap material on the outside. Uh, a little bit better. It will keep you dry. But um, when, you, when you zip it up, you know, there's a, a vented mesh system. Now, it's a bit dangerous this because if you're asleep in the night and you wriggle around, this vented mesh system can be covered by a flap and it'll velcro down. Uh, please note, if you sleep in this and you do zip it up fully, there's every chance you'll suffocate. Um, same with a lot of the other bivvy bags and you shouldn't sleep with your face in a bivvy bag anyway snug pack stratosphere have gone that little bit further into the reach search with it and I think they've come up with a really good idea I think a lot of other companies can you know benefit by looking at this um, it, the idea of this is absolutely fantastic uh, and for the price, I mean, you know, £120, uh, I think £80 or £90, that little bit more has given me more options. Um, I believe Rab do, do a bivvy, uh, I think it's called the Ridge Raider, that does have a hoop system on it, but then you're talking silly money. Um, I, I, I don't know, I can't, I can't put my finger on it and recommend it to anyone to spend that amount of money. Um, I think the British Army every time uh, because the money that you're spending and what you're going to get for it, uh, I think you'd be disappointed. So yeah, I think that's enough on that one. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to recommend it because it's it was a lot of money paid for something that doesn't do its job as well as you think it would do uh, so yeah I won't recommend that to yourselves it's alright for me walking stuff uh, but incidentally like I say the mountain sleeping bag and this doesn't work I w woke up absolutely drenched and I mean drenched do research into them before you buy them so that's that uh, Siltart 1 uh, I'll show this at the end of the video, uh, as I said you pay for the name and all the rest of it, you pay for what you get, it's not a massive top, it cost me a lot of money, um, but I can recommend this because it is absolutely super strong and durable, it's fantastic, I love this top, um, it just fits in your pocket, it's so small you can compress it down even more, it's tiny, you do get what you pay for. Uh, but do your research into it as well. It weighs absolutely nothing. Um, love it. Yeah, you'll, at the end of this video, you'll see pictures of that. So, yeah, definitely recommend. Rab, you've got one. So, uh, this one, yes, people are going to look at this and go, oh, I know what that is. No, you don't. Um, <laughs> it's just currently stored in this bag. Um, I'm not going to mention them because... <laughs> they don't want to mention me, so so be it. I've done my apologies to them. This is a three meter by three meter ripstop top, lightweight. It is not the British Army one, um, as you can tell by um, lines that I've actually got on it. I do use it quite a lot. Um, it gives you a nice big coverage especially when you're sleeping just in a bivvy bag, um, somewhere to cook under and all the rest of it and so on and so on. Um, yes, it's a, it's a good, 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 sturdy top. And with it being three meters by three meters, uh, it gives you a lot of coverage. Uh, there's a lot of guide of points, peg off points to it. 
uh, eyelets, so on and so on. Um, I do use this quite a lot because it does pack up small. Um, it's not super lightweight, but it is lightweight. Uh, it's lighter than a lot of other tarps. It's lighter than that tarp, if I, <laughs> I dare say mention it. Um, so, yeah, I think that's going to conclude my thing. On, this isn't all the, the tarps and things that I use. These are more sort of the main ones that I use um, because they just, I've used them time and time again. They've never ever failed or let me down. Uh, and like you say, when you do your research into everything, it depends on what time of year you will use certain things. Um, to get the best beneficial things out of them. I'm not going to turn that over because it might give it away. Uh, but yeah, that's that. So anyway, I think that's the end of my review on uh, sleeping bags, bivy bags and a couple of tops. Uh, just to touch on something before I go. Is I was out at the weekend and I picked up this. Uh, it's a cut pot. Uh, it's not massive as you can see. Yeah, that's my hand. It's not huge. Uh, but I just thought, for the money, I'm going to pick it up and have a whirl with it. It's stainless steel. Um, and I got this from the range for about six or seven pounds. Uh, and I thought it was quite good. I'm going to give it a whirl. It's not everything that I want it to be. Uh, so I'll just give it a try. But a pot, a lid. Uh, if you drill a small hole in there uh, and put one of them little flippy handles on it then you know you can pick that lid up but also if you turn it over and seal it well enough you've got a plate or a frying pan so hence if you've got the flippy handle on the underside and you get a pot grabber you've got a frying pan or a plate there and um, you've got a reasonable size bowl there uh, pan you know you can cook quite a bit in that uh, but not only that you get this one and you get a knife, a fork, a spoon, and a can opener. Um, don't think the can opener would be much cop, but yeah, they're not the massive things. But for a starter kit, you know, it, it'd be quite good. You, why waste your money? I've currently a clip to clip all a lot together. Um, why waste all your money on trying something that you might not even like? You know, it, a lot of people say, oh yeah, I like sleeping in the woods, I like bushcraft, all the rest of it, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and when it comes down to the crunch, you know, they'll only go out when they go with other individuals. Uh, they won't go on their own because they're frightened of the woods. <laughs> well, yeah, apart from people that shouldn't be there, uh, i.e. yourself, uh, poachers and so on and so on, there's no one that's there to really bother you. I mean, you know, it, it is the way it is. But yeah, um, I'm gonna give this a whirl, uh, see how it goes, uh, and I'll give you a, a bit of feedback on that one and a bit more of a review. So anyway, yeah, just one thing that I touched on, so give it a whirl. Incidentally, if anybody wants to send me anything to try, test, or anything like that, uh, any companies, anything like that, Please do so because I'm doing my home reviews on my kit at the moment. So when you see me go out, uh, you'll see me in my kit. Unless you send me something, then I'll state who it's from, where it's from. Uh, and then I'm going to test it to destruction pretty much. If it doesn't get destroyed, then so be it better for the company. Uh, and then it's going to get a thumbs up and a thumbs down off me. So I think, yeah, that's the end of my reviews. Uh, on the majority of my kit um, there'll be one or two other more on bits of kit and bags that I carry and whatnot. not um, then there'll be a couple more reviews on bags that I've used and absolutely hate and I'm sorry you're going to get shamed uh, and then that's it it's outdoors we go and you're going to see everything that you've seen of mine slowly come together uh, and then we're going to get a bit more into it and then I think from that I'm just going to start showing you days when I go out and things I enjoy. Uh, so until the next review, all look after yourselves.
Too late, but then he doesn't come home, and now he switched off the phone. I get it. 